My name is Preston, your host for this evening. I hope everyone has a pleasant day today. I would like to give a warm welcome to the president of Rotary Club, Luyang, Mr. Kenneth Tan, our guest speaker for tonight, Dr. Raja, fellow Rotarians, Rotractors, NT staff, and all my fellow friends. Our topic for the day is Dengue Biological Control. As for tonight's guest speaker, we have Dr. Raja. I would like to thank Dr. Raja for sharing with us this valuable information. So we will have an opening speech by our beloved organizing chairperson, Kam Lu Tang. Thank you to MC President Fong. So good evening to presidents of Rotary Club of Luyang, Mr. Kenneth Tan, our speaker, Dr. Dr. Raja Goba, Registrar of Indi College Sabah, Ms. Satina, Teacher Advisor of Rotary Club of Indi College Sabah, Ms. Sarah Wong, Rotarians, Rotaractors, and all of you who are here today. Welcome to the talk of Dengue Biological Control. Firstly, I would like to say thank you and appreciate each and every one of you for taking your time off to join the event today. My name is Kam Lu Teng. I'm the president of Rotary Club of Indi College Sabah and also the organizing chairperson for today's event. Before we get started, I would like to express my sincere appreciation to Mr. Kenneth Dan for approving this event. I feel honored that Dr. Raja has agreed to give the speech of tonight, willing to share his professional knowledge on how to protect ourselves from dengue in a biological way. I'm grateful and happy to have such opportunities to organize this meaningful event and hope all of you can enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, Kam Lu Tang. Now we would like to invite Mr. Kenneth Tan, president of Rotary Club Luyang to present a speech. Ah, okay, unmute myself already. Okay, yes. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Kenneth Tan from Rotary Club of Luyang. Initially, uh, I didn't prepare anything, but after seeing the rehearsal whereby the MC prepared such a good speech, the president come also do, I think I better do some script. Okay. Um, MC, uh, President Fong, uh, President Kam, uh, fellow Rotractor, Rotarians, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to say congratulations to Rotary Club of uh, Indy College Sabah for organizing this Dengue seminar, seminar. Your guys and girls are just wonderful. Okay. Please continue to have this kind of Rotary Rotrek engagement. Rotary Club of Luyang is always there to support your projects. Also, I would like to thank to uh, our chapter members, Datu Dr. Raja, for representing Asi Luyang in coordinating with the Rotrek Club of uh, Indi College Sabah on this project and not forgetting that you have provided your own garden to the projects for the breeding, breeding of uh, guppy fish. Let's the show begin. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kenneth Tan. Before the talk starts, I would like to make a brief introduction about our guest of honor. Everybody, please welcome Dr. Raja. Dr. Raja is an OBGYN specialist. He has been practicing medicine for 46 years. He also served in various NGOs, the most service oriented being the Rotary Club, having organized and contributed in many medical service. He also participates in many non-medical services with and without the club. The Guppy Fish Initiation is a pet project he started with breeding the guppy fish in his back garden and then distributing to other members and other clubs. He is here today to expound the benefits of guppy fish breeding for the ecological eradication of mosquitoes, especially for prevention of dengue fever. Without further ado, please give a round of applause to Dr. Dr. Raja Gopal. Uh, Tato, you have uh, muted yourself. Now it's okay? Yes, yes, yeah. we can okay. hear you now. Uh, President Kenneth Tan, Organizing Chairperson, Ms. Kam Lu Ting, our MC for today, Preston Fong, 
the teacher advisor of Rotrek Club of Inti, College Sabah, Ms. Sarah Wong, fellow Rotarians, Rotractors, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. A very good evening to all of you. And thank you very much for inviting me to be your humble speaker today. Um, this, I have to say from the beginning that, can we have the slides please? Yeah. Uh, I, ha I have to say this from the beginning that these slides are not prepared by me. Uh, these are, this, this is prepared by Dr. Lim from Sandakan. He has diligently prepared the slides and he has been going around speaking about the biological control of dengue fever. And unfortunately, he is not here at the moment. He's, he is in uh, Johor Bahru because of the COVID, he's unable to come here. So on his behalf, I am going to present these slides to him and I've already got his recorded permission. So with that, let me start the talk first. So can we go to the next slide, please? Yeah. See, the, you, you realize that dengue is a very common disease in this part of the world, especially in the tropical countries because it needs a lot of water. The dengue, dengue uh, the mosquito needs a lot of water for it to multiply. And the mosquito that, is, that causes specifically dengue fever is called Aedes aegypti. Now, apart from dengue fever, it also causes another disease called Zika disease. I will just briefly tell you about Zika disease, then go on to the next uh, slide and the next three. Now, Zika disease actually is something exactly the same way as by mosquito bite. You get fever, you get cold, cough, and all those things. But then what happens is you most of the time you recover. And sometimes what happens when it affects pregnant women, then they 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 affects the pregnancy and they deliver babies uh, with a microcephaly, which means a very small head. And therefore, these babies are abnormal in a in a, in that way because of the brain matter is very small, so they are a little bit mentally retarded. But today, they're not going to speak about Zika, we're going to speak Dengue. So Dengue fever, because it is so prevalent in this part of the world, they were finding all kinds of ways to eradicate the disease. So initially, they started off by doing what you see in this slide. They went around collecting all the utensils, all the cups and saucers which collected water, because as I said to you earlier, the water is the main breeding ground stagnant water. If you have a running water, uh, it's impossible for them to lay their eggs because it gets washed away. So stagnant water collects, uh, you know, collects in an area for a long period of time. The mosquitoes go and lay their eggs and then they hatch into larvae and they breed. So what, what they initially did was they bent around thinking that by taking away all the utensils, all the, uh, you know, containers which contained water, they can get rid of uh, the mosquitoes and therefore prevent dengue. So that was actually called in Malaysia, Gotong Royo. But then it had a temporary effect. You know, for a short time, when you emptied all these places, there was no mosquitoes. But the thing is people keep throwing, therefore it was not a complete solution. So then they had to find another way. So they were looking for other ways. Then they thought, why don't we use chemicals to treat and kill the mosquitoes? This was a good way, but then you have to remember, chemical is chemical. So it has got, it's a pesticide. So it, use, it causes other harmful effects. So they were using this chemical called abate. When you spray it around your housing area or anywhere around where you think the mosquitoes are uh, breeding, they kill the mosquitoes. But then because of the chemical effect, you need to wear masks and you need to wear shields to protect yourself from inhaling. So those workers were praying, they were using this mask. But let's say if you're staying in a housing area like that, and when they come to spray along your drains, around the housing area, then what happens is if you inhale these fumes, they are detrimental to your health. They cause lung infection, they cause pneumonia, they call irritation to your eyes, and you're inhaling, therefore it is not healthy for you, number one. Number two, when they sprayed these things, what happens? The mosquitoes die. But some of the mosquitoes, they fly away. And when these fumes settle down, the mosquitoes will come back again. So this is also a, not a very permanent method. And number three, what happens is when you spray these this, this, uh, this fumes, not only do they kill 
the mosquitoes. They also kill other ecological animals and insects and, and, and you know, all kinds of uh, vegetation around because if they spray in your area, all even your plants, you, if you have vegetables around your garden, you can't even eat them because the pesticide stays in your in the vegetables. So they kill things like spiders and 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 you know lizards and toads and birds. So it was not really good because in this world we live together. We live with good animals, as well as we live with people. So that this is a symbiosis. We are we are benefiting from both sectors. So this fuming was also not very good. Therefore, these chemicals was also expensive. So it so you know chemical control was good, but it kills beneficial insects and other animals. Therefore, it is not very conducive. Then, then what they did was, can we have the next slide, please? Then they started to have this vaccination program. Vaccination is uh, you inject yourself, then therefore you don't get dengue. But then they realized that dengue, there are many kinds of dengue. They have a virus, which is called virus number one, number two, number three, number four. So when they discovered this vaccine, uh, they gave the injection and then they found that even after the injection, some people still get dengue. So you can actually get dengue four times. So if you get dengue first time and if it's infected by dengue virus number one, so probably that injection that they gave you was only good for one. So number two, number three, number four can still affect you. So they found not only was it if, uh, not that effective, it was only 50 to 40 percent effective. Number two, it was also uh, expensive. And number three, if let's say you have never got dengue before and you took the injection, sometimes you can react to it. Therefore, you can actually get a very bad effect of, from the vaccine itself. So this was not really good and expensive. So this didn't really uh, get off the, uh, the, 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 the footing because uh, you know, it was not really helpful. So it didn't really, people didn't really start injecting themselves. So it stopped halfway, you know, uh, Philippines tried and then they failed. So they left it because some people died. So they just left it. So as I said, because you see the dengue, when you have the serotype, so you get variants of dengue fever. So you can't, you can't, you just can't inject one and expect all the virus to die. Exactly like the way COVID is doing now. We are injecting ourselves with COVID injection, but then there are many variants which are coming and they haven't found a vaccine for that. They haven't found a vaccine for all the different variants. So dengue vaccine is a serotype, which means it only kills certain kinds of virus, one and two or two and three or two and three and four. So, it is, so they had to find something which was, which was very beneficial for everybody and also eco-friendly. So the only thing they, found, they thought of was the guppy fishes. So the guppy fishes actually, they are, they are indigenous to this country. They live in the ponds, they are uh, uh, biologically called poisilla and they are very easy to breed. You can just put them into ponds in stagnant water and they are scavenger fishes. When I say scavenger fishes, I mean, they eat anything. So even if we threw any rubbish into the ponds, or uh, even if it, you know some insects sit on there, they eat and they breed very easily. They each time, every time they litter, they litter about forty to fifty fries. They call it small fishes are called as fries. So they are very indigenous to this part of the world. You can find that these guppy fishes are easily found in Malaysia, in Singapore, in Thailand, in Laos, Cambodia, all this area. And they are oviparous, which means they fertilize internally. And each time they, they deliver, they deliver 20 to 40 fries, which is how fast they get. Can I have the previous slide, please? Yeah. So, and also they, they tolerate a wide range of temperature, right? From cold to heat. So you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, the, the water being too alkaline or too acidic. So they live in this different kinds of, uh, you know, the pH of the water. And also they are able to withstand very low oxygen. So if let's say your drains are polluted, they can still survive. But you see, if you get rare fishes in an aquarium, you have to look after the oxygen level. You have to make sure that you don't, you don't overfeed them because they die by these fishes you don't have to re really look after them. You just throw them and they grow. So they're easy to look after. So these fishes, they ate the larvae, they ate the mosquitoes. So if you have these fishes in around your housing area or around wherever you are staying and you find that that particular area is infested with mosquitoes, you rare these fishes, 
you don't have to worry about them. You just put them in different, different corners. In that, you know, if you have a house with a bigger compound, you put four or five basins, you put water, you put the fishes, and then they multiply. And wherever there's stagnant water, this, this larvae and uh, this uh, mosquitoes will go to breed. And then this, this, uh, this fishes will eat them. And therefore you are controlling the development, the, the, the multiplication of, this, of the mosquitoes. And you're not ecologically, you're not disturbing the environment. And, and, and it, is, it is beneficial for both of us. In other words, you rear the fish and they look after the uh, environment for you. So this was an easy way. So an easy way and a very ecologically friendly way. Can we go to the next slide, please? Yeah. So this is what uh, uh, Sandakan, um, Dr. Lim did it. So he found that because this was effective, he started to give lecture to interact clubs on mass production of guppy fishes. So, and also when they were rearing these guppy fishes, he gave it to the Rotary Club of Sandakan, he gave, distributed to the housing areas, he gave it to churches, he gave it to interact clubs. And then once he gave, he gave them, he monitored them, he did a census studies. In other words, he went back to the place again after say two or three months to monitor to see how many people get dengue in that area or how many people have less mosquitoes in that area. So he thought that this was a very nice way of looking after ourselves and looking after the control of dengue. So he could do field, he could actually do field studies. So he gave it to public as well as all the different, different clubs. And so he eventually came to my club, uh, I think under the invitation of uh, our president, he came, he gave us a talk. And I thought it was really good because, you know, this was uh, beneficial for everybody. So I actually volunteered to take the, some of these guppy fishes and I kept it in my compound. And I was studying how, how effective it was. So I kept them in different, in basins, in different, different areas in my house because I've got a compounded house. And I realized that, you know, when I used to go to the house in the, night, in the, the, to the garden in the evening, I used to get bitten by mosquitoes. But now the number of mosquitoes were less and they were, they were, they were, there were more guppy fishes and therefore there was lesser mosquitoes. So it was very, very beneficial. So in that way, you not only are protecting the other beneficial animals because by spraying or using chemicals, you're actually killing the spiders, you're killing the toads, you're killing the, the mosquitoes, I mean, the, the, the lizards and as well as bees, swiftlets. But so it, here you're not killing any animals at the same time mosquitoes are lesser and the beneficial effects for both people are good. So why not an easy, simple way? So I, in the, the, we call the Interact Club and, uh, of, uh, of Sabah uh, and the Rotary Club of Sabah, uh, Rotary Clubs, and we gave them, uh, not Interact, actually Rotractors, we gave them some of these guppy fishes and told them to distribute around their housing area, around their university, around the campus. So they did it. So we were actually wanting to monitor and find out how to do the census studies and see how effective they were. But unfortunately, because of the COVID virus, they couldn't go out of their, uh, you know, their place of stay. So we were not able to succeed. But in my house, I'm able to monitor myself. So if I gave some to any one of you, you all can monitor yourself. So, so it's a it's a win-win situation. So you keep in your house, you let you have less mosquitoes, and you distribute to your friends. Your friends have less mosquitoes, so everybody has is happy, and everybody has, uh, you know, less dengue fever. So in other words, what I'm saying is, like in in America, when there was an outbreak of Zika disease, they sprayed a lot of chemicals and killed a lots of bees. And these bees are actually very very important because. They, they are important for cross-pollination, for germination, for vegetation. So they realized that use, using chemicals is a very bad way. So the side effects of chemical control is not only for the, 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 the parasite or the, the insect, it also kills the beneficial uh, environment. So in conclusion, I can say um, it is an indigenous species, easy to culture, does not upset the ecosystem. Good results are obtained in various countries. In Vietnam, they have done studies. In Laos, Cambodia, Thailand, they've done. And therefore, this is what we all should do. Now, Dr. Lim, you can see here, he is very, very earnest and very passionate about these guppy fishes. He invited a lot of speakers. He invited even the DG. And he distributed these guppy fishes to many people. And there you can see him distributing that 
into the into the drain and he gave a talk into some of the clubs and also he went to the churches and he distributed to all the different churches and 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 monitored to see whether they and he has very good statistics to show that he has succeeded and uh, so because he's so passionate and he's succeeding here he's distributing to one of the church members there so and i think in conclusion i can say that if everyone wants to benefit uh, you can come to my house. I can give you some of the guppy fishes I have, and I've also distributed to the, some of the Rotary Clubs of other members. I also given it to some of the inner wheel ladies, and they all are very happy. So you all can also rare in your compound, and you can try and see whether it's beneficial for you all. So with this, I end my uh, talk, and I, and I thank you so much for your attention. And I'll, I'm free and you can ask me questions if you want, whichever questions you think that you need to know, I can help you out in some, whichever way. I know. I'm not an authority over dengue, but whatever I know, I can share with you. Thank you very much, yeah. Thank you, Dr. Raja, for an informative sharing with us.